Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my string of pearls. I'm going to show you how I care for it, how to propagate it. I actually get quite a few comments or requests to uh, do a video like this just because I know a lot of people struggle with this plant, including myself when I first started out. It's not an easy to care for plant until you understand what this plant requires and then you can basically call it a low maintenance plant after that. Before I start talking about the care of this plant, there is one fact uh, that I think is super cool that I have to talk about. Have you ever noticed the little stripe or strip on the leaf? I've always wondered what that was from, if it's from the formation of the, uh, the leaf itself or when it's developing, but actually it has a functional purpose. I'm just gonna pull it up here on my phone first. So the translucent tissue on the side of the leaf is actually a window, which allows light to enter the interior of the leaf, effectively increasing the area available to photosynthesize. This adaptation to arid environments is seen in several other succulents in Southern Africa. I think that is just absolutely incredible that it basically developed a little window to optimize photosynthesis through a, a little window on the side of the leaf. Um, that's just, yeah, absolutely crazy. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the light requirements for this plant. And because it's a succulent, it needs a lot of light. But in my experience, I would say it doesn't need as much as say like a J plant where they need at least uh, six hours of bright light throughout the day. This one can tolerate a little bit less, but it still needs a lot of light. You can't just throw it in a corner or on a shelf and expect it to do well. This specific plant is on my plant shelf. It's on a western wall, so it gets some southeastern uh, exposure sunlight, and I think that's probably the best spot for it. Pull back a little bit from a south-facing window or even in an eastern-facing window, I think is ideal for these plants. I like to use a digital light meter for helping me to determine where to place my plants. This one in particular, like I said, it needs a lot of light and in the morning it gets that direct sunlight. So anything above 500 foot candles on the light meter, uh, so 500 to 1000 foot candles is high light and anything above 1000 foot candles is considered direct sunlight. So it's getting around that 700 to 900 for a couple hours in the morning and then just bright indirect light throughout the day. So that is absolutely perfect for this plant. I could also see this doing extremely well underneath a grow light like my J plant over here. I'm gonna take my light meter and see what kind of foot candles it's getting. So it automatically defaults to uh, Lux. So I'm gonna change that to foot candles and I'm gonna change the range here, a couple settings, just so we can see what type of light it gets underneath the grow light. Right underneath the light, it's getting that highlight, so about 600 foot candles. And the further away you get from the light, obviously you can see the amount of light that it is receiving goes down. So if you have it underneath a grow light, just make sure that you have it within a few inches of the leaves themselves and that way you can optimize the amount of light that it is getting. For this next part, I'm gonna be talking about watering soil and pot selection as I find there needs to be a cohesion between the three in order for this plant to survive. So just like with any succulent, you wanna make sure that the soil is absolutely bone dry before you give it any water. I also like to tell, um, and it can be a little bit difficult on these string of pearls as they're quite small, but you may see a little bit of wrinkling on the leaves or they might feel a little bit squishy and with that dry soil and kind of those little wrinkles on the leaves, then it's probably a good time to give it some water. When you do water it, just absolutely soak it. Let it come out the bottom of the drain hole, empty out the saucer, and then don't give it any water until it uh, is absolutely bone dry or you see those little wrinkles again. Typically that can be around two weeks in the summer and uh, throughout the winter months as it's not receiving uh, as much light as it is in the summer, you can probably cut back on watering just a little bit more as well. So maybe once a month or maybe once every three, four weeks kind of thing. So just pay attention to the soil, pay attention to the leaves, and that will tell you when it needs to be watered. For soil, I actually don't have any on hand, but I will only use a cactus and succulent specific soil. It is formulated for these plants so that it doesn't hold on to water for too long. Do not put it in like a regular potting soil. You wanna make sure it's a cactus and succulent formulated uh, mixture. A lot of times you can't see it, but it actually has a, a bunch of soil amendments in the, uh, the soil itself, which contain uh, sand, 
um, and lots of perlite. So if it stays wet for too long, you're probably gonna see a little bit of that wrinkling as well as they'll dry up and basically just fall off. You'll see brown tips on the ends of your strands. Um, so if you see that sort of thing, or if it's just declining, you see all the pearls falling off, probably staying wet for too long. So it's not necessarily an overwatering issue. You can soak this when it's in the proper soil. You can just keep giving it water uh, continuously and it's not gonna be overwatered. It's when it's in the wrong type of soil and it holds on to moisture for too long is when you start to develop those root rot issues. Now, almost as equally important as the correct soil is having a, an appropriate pot. For like 95% of my succulents and cactus, I will only use terracotta, and that just basically assists the soil in drying out. Terracotta, it's very porous. It basically absorbs soil moisture lower in the pot, and it evaporates it out. It also provides the um, good airflow since it is quite porous, so that is uh, extremely healthy uh, for the roots. Just, yeah, it just dries out the soil much faster than if it was in uh, a plastic nursery pot. It can't breathe or evaporate through plastic. It can only be used up from the root system or evaporating out of the top. So a good pot, making sure it has a large enough drain hole on the bottom to, uh, I guess, drain out any excess water and then having it in the proper soil is, uh, is key to having these plants uh, grow and thrive for you. I really wish I was sponsored by Root Farm, but I bought these two products. This is a water uh, pH testing kit, and then I have a pH down, which I'll explain here in a minute. The water that I use is a filtered tap water for all of my house plants, and when I tested it, it came up as uh, very alkaline. So most tropical house plants, as well as succulents, they need something slightly acidic. So for succulents, the ranges is between 5.5 to 6.5 for pH. My tap water was very alkaline at eight and it's, uh, it's very easy to test your water source. You have a little testing solution and a little testing container. You add your uh, water sample into it, add three drops in and it'll tell you um, just on the side of the container It'll show you which level uh, your pH is at for your water. And then I bought this uh, pH down, it's called. So you add some solution to your water and that drops the pH to the appropriate level. So you can test it again through your little testing kit. And this will give the proper water pH to your plants. If your soil is too alkaline or too acidic, your plant can't utilize or uptake those nutrients that you provide it. So when you fertilize it, and the pH is out of range, your plant cannot utilize those uh, fertilizer nutrients in order for it to grow. Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's all kind of boring, just kind of jibber jabber, but I had no idea that the uh, pH of the water in soil was extremely important to plants. So I've been watering all of them with this pH down as well as some fertilizer. Now that all this is out of the way, I just remembered another cool fact that I recently read about this plant. A couple of years ago, I had a like a fairly large uh, pot of these uh, string of pearls and it just started to slowly decline and I had to take some propagations off of that plant, which, whoops, uh, which in turn uh, developed this one in just a matter of a couple years. And like I said, I'll show you how to propagate it here in a second. But in doing a little bit of research about this plant, they only really have a, a shelf life of between three to five years before they start to decline. So I had no idea that despite you giving it the appropriate care, it can still die back in like three to five years. And that's exactly what that other plant did. I thought it had pests on it, but I never did see anything. Um, it just started to decline and I quickly took some uh, cuttings, propagated it into uh, soil, which like I said, I'll show you uh, how to do that here shortly. But yeah, just understand that these have a short lifespan and they may die for no reason. Now for propagation and before I start chopping it up, I just want to show right here. This is where I have previously propagated it. So you can see there is a cut portion of the stem. It will regrow. So it'll grow a new vining portion from one of the closest nodes and sometimes it'll even branch out further up just like most other house plants uh, you can see this one branched out right here so it bifurcates and now it's got two stems from that one vine so when you want to take a propagated portion basically you're just giving this a little bit of a haircut cut in between two little round leaves just snip it off like that and you can propagate this entire stem so now i have the little section like this and all i'm going to do is remove probably four or five of these leaves. So uh, just pull them off, just like they're little peas. I'm gonna set these aside, 
and then you have a section of the stem like this. Now I'm going to be placing this back into the pot, so I'm just taking my pencil, I'm just making a small little hole right down into the soil. Just place that leafless portion of the stem into the soil and just cover it up. So I have already watered this plant, so I don't have to give it any more water. And you just want to just kind of drape that over the edge like that, making sure that portion is covered. And that's all you do. Now for these little leaves, they have the little petiole portion, just drop them in and they should, just like AJ plant, start their own new vine. So the ones that you take off, I just place right back in the soil. I'm gonna take another little cutting right here, do the same thing. I'm just gonna pull off a few of the lower leaves. Take my pencil. This is a good way to fill in any bare areas that you may have in the plant as well. And just stick that in the, in the soil, cover it up, and that is it. Some information out there says to let the ends callus over for a day, but I just stick them back in the soil. I've never had an issue. So I got a few more of these little leaf pearls that I'm just dumping on top as well. And I might sprinkle it with a little bit of soil just on top, just to kind of fill in those areas. Just something like that. The new pearls will grow through the soil. Make sure I'm not squishing any pearls there that are in the saucer. Just kind of pack that down. So that's pretty much all I do for this plant. Humidity, it's not an issue. It comes from a very dry kind of arid environment. Um, pests, uh, basically mealybugs I think is the big one for this. I've never had any issues with that, uh, knock on wood. Um, otherwise, when you understand how to care for this plant, it is uh, considered a low maintenance plant. And that's what it is for me. So uh, I really don't do anything for it. I just let it uh, grow in vine like this and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching my videos, everyone. Appreciate the support. Thanks, bye.